crowd really sense this could be the one to sort it all out. He's on the inside grid here, Mike Lee. He's got John Davis next to him, Chris Morton. He's got two English teammates really to look after him. If yeah, he... I was surprised because I wasn't one for throwing s down the straight. And when I see people do that, I think it's pretty nasty. It's yeah. not necessary. You know, you can push people wide. You can close the gap. I've always been one for leaving people enough room to get themselves out of trouble, but hopefully they'll lose 15 yards, not taking them all the way and over the top. And some people do that, you know. And Bruce was tearing his hair out of what happened, mate. And, and I sat down and I went, that's the way it goes, Bruce. If you hadn't have thrown a bloody S band on me, I wouldn't have probably never got on to win it and, and done what I did. I never used to prepare a bike, especially for a world final, which was an error, mate. All my bikes were prepared as good as I could each meeting. And if it got me 12 points Saturday, flying, beating Holly Olsen, Bruce Pennell, Peter Collins, then that's the bike and the engine I want to use on Saturday. And that's exactly what I've done. Unfortunately, especially at Wembley, it, it was expensive. And then I said, uh, oh, I'm going to finish at Wembley now as world champion and, and then stop on the top of that. And nobody's done this before, no. so I'm going to do that. And that's when I said to Wesley, I'm going to win it on, on the Westlake down there. And I really had a good go with it. You see, the, the implications of that accident, that, that crash in America, was the fact that Josh led the World Championship just about. And Kenny knew more than anybody that that track was going to get re very narrow on him. But he just kept coming, didn't he? He didn't back yeah. off. You know, it was a suicidal move because the track, we all knew it was so bloody narrow. And it, it just ran me straight through the fence coming out. I, I was on the outside in front and he just took me like straight underneath me and I'm not kidding referee, I just had a chance. If Kenny's father had not gone to Los Angeles, Kenny would have been won the World Championship. No, there was no question about that. Uh, and that was hard and I wasn't going to take anything from the kid. But, you know, everybody knew that the kid wasn't all there. He was not all there upstairs. He would do things that, that which was totally out of his mind. In fact, I've seen him do some things that were just complete and utter, you know, craziness on the racetrack and come out unscathed where he should have been in the hospital. I had a disastrous start to the 85 World Championship and yeah. everything. And, and Previn was saying to me, Eric, if you, because I was, blaming the bike, it was uh, puffing and uh, smoke, and I said, it's not right, this, and it was me, you know, that I wasn't right in my uh, in my head, I wasn't sort of eager enough to go out and do it, and Prime says, if you don't really get yourself, you act together, I'm going to load up the bikes and we can go home, and he meant it. Your mind starts racing, you because, uh, you know, you've got a chance to be world champion, you know, and five rides away from being world champion, you know, and... You know, then you have delusions of grandeur, you know, can I do it? And then people ringing you up and doing interviews. And it was all, you know, ever so exciting, but also kind of frightening as well, you know, because the actual implications of it were huge. Huge. And I, I definitely felt that, you know, on the day I was horrendously nervous. I remember I was in Eat One. I remember I was, Egon Muller was in it, and he was world champion from a year or two before, and I was chatting to Egon. And, on the parade, and he said, how are you feeling, Kilvin? And I said, I'm OK, I lied, because he could see in me. If you go into a world final and you, you, you drop races to let somebody else win, you shouldn't be in the world final. Mm. That's not what it's about. It's about doing your best, and I always believe in doing your best. Whether you score five points, ten points, don't drop races. Why should you? Let them win. If they deserve to win, they will win. And that's what it's all about. In any sport. When I look back, I think the very most important for me today is the fact that I won one, first of all, and then how to uh, won four is, is great. And I mm. think whether I won five or six um, it doesn't really matter that much. I 
world champion Penn Hall challenges the challenger, and the challenger, Les Collins, rides even with him and pulls away again. This could change the entire world championship. This battle being put on by Les Collins. Here comes Carter right round the line, up the inside completely. And look at him banging into Pennell. Carter on the inside, another one for Pennell. Carter into second place. Now Penhall is back to second place. Out of turn number two, Carter goes down. Here goes uh, the tapes go, and in number 19, we look for Nelson. Nelson has gone away. Muller has made a disastrous start. And Muller's gone down the curb. And was his wheels over the line? It looks as though just his front wheel was over the inside curb there. They'll be talking about that one. But the battle of the Deans here in 15. Oh, and Red's been left at the start. That's Andrzejczyk. But out in front, Gunness has made it. Put, oh, he was shoved out there by Nielsen. Moran's there as well, and Nielsen is shut out. Such a crucial one, and getting away well is Knutson off the inside there. Knutson leads them around the first turn. Nielsen pegged back to second position. Now what can Nielsen make of this as they go into the bends around the pits turn there? Knutson leads its centre track, and coming through on the inside is Nielsen, but down goes Knutson. Nielsen is the new world champion. And Knutson's got a fly out. And Johnson's gone with him as well. Johnson and Goodison together. Here comes Ermolenko down the outside. And Johnson's gone clear of Goodison. And Ermolenko's going under both of them. And he's taken them all in. And Goodison's been squeezed out. And this time Wick's away, and so too is Nielsen. And Wick around the outside, and Nielsen down the inside. Can Wick prevail here? But there is no stopping hands, Nielsen. Nielsen in front. He leads at second place as Wick.